Howdy. Today I'd like to discuss the shaped op optimization tool from Fusion 360. And we're looking at a simplified sketch here. It is important to have your constraints in place and be far enough along in the design process that you would expect minimal changes to the dimensions. With shape optimization, we're going to take this simple geometry that I've laid out and we're going to extrude it. And we'll ensure that we have all the objects selected from the sketch and go about three millimeters. Now by default, this new body that's created in Fusion 360 will be steel. For the purpose of today's example, we're assuming this is going to be a lighter weight product. We'll go to the render and we'll switch it to aluminum, which is typical for something that we might CNC mill for a robotics application. So we'll drag and drop aluminum onto the product, close that out, and from here we'll save. And we can go straight to the simulations from the render pull down menu, switch to simulation. Now, our new study would like to be a shape optimization near the bottom center of your choices. Create study. We're assuming that these three small holes will receive rivets across the top. So we want to apply constraints, meaning that that area will not be moving. We're holding that stationary. The constraints are applied. Click OK. Additionally, we'd like to go ahead and ensure that those areas where the large circles are, are preserved. So we're going to use the preserve region. And we'll drag that out far enough so that we have about 24 millimeters on our radius. Type that in and apply the same preservation of the region on the other bearing area. It's important that you click the surface, not the line. Preserve that region. Next, let's look at applying primary and secondary load. Since this area is subject to impact, we're going to have the primary load. And we'll use that surface and we'll set it to 200 pound force. Say OK. We'll also have a secondary load on this angled surface. And we'll make it about half that, and we'll go with 100 pound force. Say OK. Now we can begin the simulation. It will use cloud credits and could take several minutes to solve. Once you click Solve Study, you should be able to then see your results after two or three minutes. I like to tinker with the slider and see what would happen if I took away minimal material. Obviously the blue area is very safe. The green area is also safe. The yellow area could be compromising to remove. And the red area must remain in place in order the, for the product to retain its integrity. So after having experimented with your slider for quite some time, uh, you should make a decision about where to leave it and then promote, promote, and make sure that it goes back to the design workspace. Click OK. Now you'll notice if you expand the bodies, you have your original body and the new body, which is a mesh. So we're going to toggle the visibility of our original body. And we'll use this new mesh to then create a sketch 
on top of our original sketch where we will perform some additional extrusions. Okay, I'd like to lay out some simple geometry with this first example and then stay tuned for a more advanced tutorial later. At this phase, we're primarily interested in doing the minimum amount of material reduction. We want to have a very safe product that will not fail under load. So we're more or less adhering to the geometry as recommended. And you can clearly see most of these are triangles or polygons that are similar to what was prescribed by the shape optimization tool. Keeping in mind, this is the area right here where most of the material will be removed. The largest amount of material will be taken from this back edge. All right. So that's a basic idea of the geometry that I intend to extrude from my original body. I'd like to enlarge this triangle just a little more. And we'll ensure that we're ready to extrude each of these shapes. Toggle the visibility to your original body and let's extrude all the way through the material so it turns red and cuts. Say OK to that. Now let's apply a rule fillet uh, using the rule fillet pull down menu for faces and features move to your timeline and select your last extrusion that you just performed. Let's go to fillets only and we'll type a value of at least two, let's go with 2.5 millimeter radius. Say OK to that. Now that has applied a 2.5 millimeter radius to each of those extruded edges. It is helpful to go in and apply some additional fillets, especially to factory edges, so that when this part comes off of the milling machine, it is not sharp and it is a little bit safer to handle with your bare hands. So we'll zoom in on some of these factory edges and we'll apply the 2.5 millimeter fillet to each of those. Again, we're trying to make our first iteration. You could choose, after having run a static stress test later, to come back and fill it even more material away. Uh, especially in these areas where we know we're not receiving a lot of force. So this potentially, this 2.5 right here could potentially become up to 5 or even 10 millimeters later in a second iteration of this part. So with that in mind, you would then be able to go back to the simulation and finish these results. You want to start a new study this time we want to do a static stress test. This would ensure that the part has the integrity that we're expecting it to. Your constraints should be identical. So we're going to constrain those holes where we intend to place rivets and fasten it directly to the robot frame. We want to apply loads, the identical values and surfaces that we applied before, 200 pound force to the front edge and 100 pound force to the bottom angled edge.
Now, these results should be calculated, and we're hoping that everything comes out in the blue. So once you click Solve Study, you should have results similar to mine. This is a very safe product. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of material could be removed. The most important thing to remember about running shape optimization is that you must have at least one constraint and you must have at least one load. And the same applies when you go back to test your product later. You should also have the same identical constraints and loads.